you dig into it and you're like, wow, there's a lot of insight here too. I'm immediately looking at that when I see that, you know, because I'm sick and disgusting. And the first thing I do when I wake up is open Twitter. And it's at the very top of the timeline. And I'm like, yes, Christmas morning. I don't know. It's conflicted. fine. I know. I know. Because like Arkin and I were messaging this morning. Okay, thank you. This is a gift. And we don't hear from Jones for an hour because he has to read it twice before he can even give one opinion on it in private. Oh, that's not true. I just, I need to, I need to uh, organize all the thoughts for reading purposes here. Arkan, did you, uh, did you enjoy it or no? I sure did. Um, I enjoyed it because I think it's finally an opportunity, maybe not a direct one, but an opportunity for Bill Belichick to fight back a little bit, which I've been waiting for now since, really since the press conference, since he got fired. I mean, ever, ever since then, I always thought, you know, we're going to hear his side of this at some point. Then the dynasty comes out, 10 parts, just bam, uh, really uh, going after him and, uh, and saying some rough things about him. And now it seems like, at the very least, he's, uh, he's starting to fight back. He's starting to put his side out there. And I think what came out today made uh, Robert Kraft look terrible, really 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 terrible okay let's get right into it and I don't dismiss that Bill could be uh punching back and this is the beginning of it I don't think he's done he just wrapped up an interview on McAfee where he said nothing by the way wasn't asked about this story at ESPN he'll be part of McAfee's draft coverage which oh what story (laughs) after hearing the draft coverage I'd encourage you to tune into Rich Keefe and Andy Hart uh live during the draft because Bill didn't say squat uh but we can get to that coming up uh meanwhile if you're unfamiliar with the story voted off the island Inside Bill Belichick's failed job hunt, Don Van Nata, Seth Wickersham, Jeremy Fowler, among others, contributing to this story. If you do know what we're talking about, you can jump in right now. 617-779-7937. Here's how it starts. A few hours before the Falcons named Raheem Morris to be their next head coach, Bill Belichick believed the Atlanta job was his. From Belichick's perspective, he'd done everything right. He assured Blank he wasn't seeking total control. He pledged to work with the team's existing group of decision makers, guys we talked about before, Rich McKay, Terry Fontenot. And Belichick also knew that Blank had checked his references hmm, with a group that included Patriots owner Robert Kraft and his son, Jonathan, who when Wickersham's around, Jonathan gets an awful lot of name drops, I've started to notice. Even in Atlanta's crowded field of 14 candidates, which included Jim Harbaugh and Mike Vrabel, Belichick was confident he'd be hired, No other candidate owned eight Super Bowl rings. That's a perfect Bill answer. Guy names his boat. He's like, I got this job. I got eight rings. Even though most people look at it rationally and say, "Eh, Bill, it's six. And you kind of sucked last year. And then, like many fans, Belichick was blindsided by news that Atlanta had hired Raheem Morris. When he was asked about Belichick's failed candidacy, Arthur Blank spoke respectfully. Quote, a living legend, Blank called him. What Blank did not say is that he and his top lieutenants had voted on the team's next head coach, ranking each candidate. Belichick didn't even finish in anyone's top three. The greatest coach of all time hadn't come close, and that was as close as Bill Belichick would come in 2024. So that's the beginning. That's the backdrop. He wasn't close in Atlanta. No one voted for him. We'll get to Kraft stabbing him in the back, which he's already done publicly, but apparently he was doing on the phone to Arthur Blank, which some of us in real time assumed was happening, by the way. I don't think this is all that hard to figure out, but... Your takeaway from that, left out in Atlanta and that Kraft maybe had a part in it. So my first takeaway is where did this story come from? Because as you started, we've heard a lot from the Kraft side or what seems to be presented from the Kraft side. And the part where you just finished in that beginning of the story, it's not exactly flattering for Bill, right? To say that he didn't finish on in the top three of anybody's votes. At the end of the day, Arthur Blank held the cards to be able to play. Like he's the one who was going to make the decision. And I do feel like a big chunk of this story appears to come from Bill's camp. So I do think that some of this is some attempt of Bill or people around Bill trying to take shots back at the crafts by saying, no, 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 no. The main reason that he didn't get this job is because Robert Kraft and maybe even more so Jonathan Kraft are in the wings making phone calls, making phone calls out to Atlanta talking poorly about his character. And you got Mike Lombardi all over it. You've got friends of friends and people close to Bill quoted in it. Well, when you say That's what all, jumped out to me. All over it. Yeah, Lombardi's quoted in the story, as are people close to Kraft as well. Uh, but Arkan, what was your big takeaway from that, at least first part, where he's left out uh, in Atlanta and wasn't even in the top three? Um, the big takeaway for me, and that's sort of an uncomfortable truth about the rest of this, because I do think the Kraft stuff is very, very juicy, obviously, and I think that there's a lot to it. But the very beginning of it and the first impression that I had from reading it was, even if Kraft didn't make those calls, 
he might not have gotten this job anyway. It wasn't like he was he was the the guy for uh, for blank and blank respected him and liked him. He's an old guy, like all of that. I, I think is is true. But blank also has a history of really leaning on his lieutenants and leaning on those people, and they were not about bringing Belichick in at all. And it seemed like that was. Uh, non-negotiable for some of those people, and that was reported on at the time. These people working inside these organizations don't want any part of Bill Belichick because they know he's going to come in and clean house and do everything his way and shut everybody down and then leave in two years, and that was one of the big issues here. But I think that as much as... As much as I'd like to say that it was it was Kraft doing all of this and Kraft's the one who really uh, uh, made it not happen, I think there's a very good chance, probably a very likely chance, that Bill doesn't get this job anyway. Okay. I don't, uh, just really quick, though, to address that, like, I agree with you that I think that for most of these other, for most teams, and we hear about these other teams, like Philly was never really in it, but they were right. thinking about it. The Panthers thinking about it. Tennessee, these, I mean, they, yeah, they, they listed all the other ones. Other teams that it, that were thinking about Bill or at least putting a little bit of a feeler out. Like, I buy that, but you read this, and the first meeting that he had with Arthur Blank Blank walked away being like, this is this is my guy. Like, of course I'm bringing him in. So I don't... But then they I also interviewed like 20 other people. So right, right, right. And I get that. But I, I just don't think you can separate the performances and who Bill is over the last several Look, years and then have the cr- pretend like the crafts saying what they allegedly said doesn't have anything to do with Look, it. Look, I, I don't know if Arthur Blank would have ultimately hired Bill Belichick because uh, Robert Kraft... Uh, talk trash about him. Maybe he would have before Kraft uh, talked down. We'll give you some specific details in a minute, but I don't really care. I don't care. Robert Kraft was trashing Bill Belichick to Arthur Blank. That's what I care about. And I think this story basically confirms that, uh, but I don't need Stacey James's denial or anyone else's denial. He ripped him publicly on national television or, you know, on Apple TV plus or whatever. He ripped him publicly there. He basically ripped him. This is my takeaway from that press conference we played for you. After Bill got done with the morning session with Robert and Robert came on two hours later and we played it for you right at the start of our show, I'm like, Robert just stabbed him in the back there. So of course he's going to do it behind closed doors. But that's the takeaway. And listen to some of the detail in the story that could come from Bill's side. But listen to the sourcing on this. Arthur Blank spoke by phone at least twice to Robert Kraft. And again, I'm reading from ESPN, Don Van Nata, Seth Wickersham. Uh, If you're unfamiliar with the story, it's a good read. We'll give you all the details here. Uh, Among NFL owners, Blank considers Kraft his closest friend. Publicly, Kraft and Blank have said that Kraft expressed only support and offered praise for his former coach. Mm -hmm. But in a conversation with Blank, Kraft delivered a stark assessment of Belichick's character. And according to a source who spoke to two people, a close Kraft friend and a longtime Belichick confidant. So that's their way of saying, look, we heard this story from both sides. The source quoted the Belichick source as saying, Robert called Arthur to warn him not to trust Bill. That account was backed up, the source said, by a close Kraft friend. Multiple sources said Kraft spoke with some candor to blank about Belichick, though the sources declined to elaborate. One source close to Bill said Kraft was a big part of why the Falcons passed on hiring him. Again, that's from Bill's perspective, not the Kraft side. The sources said Kraft made clear to Blank, you'll never have a warm conversation with Belichick, echoing what Bill Parcells told Kraft in 96 when he wanted to bust the budget to hire Bill Belichick. Blank likes coaches who feel a part of the family, a Falcon source said, and it wasn't going to be that way with Bill. So I'll pick up with more of this in a moment, but it's like, oh, Arthur likes family, and oh, Bill's going to blow up our building. I know that's kind of the the scapegoating of the story. Rich McKay and Terry Fontenot and all those guys didn't want to lose any power. And I think because Kraft and Blank are so close, Kraft knew how to talk Blank out of hiring Bill. I think his role was massive, if you're asking my opinion. But regardless, I don't know Blank's thoughts. I don't know if he would have hired Bill or not. What I do know is that Kraft was trashing Bill. Not just in the dynasty, not just at the podium. He was making sure he was going to do his hardest for Bill not to get a job. No matter what Blank decided, that's what Kraft tried to do. I agree, and I would just say a big part of this article, I think, as I said before, is Bill's friends wanting that out there, wanting it back out there that, hey, the crafts are saying all this stuff. They're posting on Instagram and Twitter for Bill Belichick's birthday yesterday. But even after they shoved Bill out the building, they were going and calling the blanks and saying, he's not a warm guy. You can't treat him like family. He's not trustworthy, you can't allegedly. You trust him. What a thing You can't trust him. And by the way, he's also very 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 arrogant as if that's news to anybody like i i think that a big part of this is that 
somebody around Bill wanted that out there. That, hey, it was a shock to a lot of people that the job went to Morris and not Bill Belichick. And so that's yeah. kind of weird. And the reason is because the Crafts were on the phone making these calls. Okay. Why shouldn't it be out there? I mean, Bill, Bill has been uh, dragged by the Crafts in the dynasty. Well, because here's and the so thing, So why, why shouldn't I mean, no, I no, I'm not saying it shouldn't it be out there. It probably did come I, out from his side, but why not? Why I, shouldn't it? But I think it's, it's important. I, I agree. I think it's, like, equally important, though, to keep in mind what Arkan said, which is, like, Bill is at a point now where he is too big to fail, and it's like you can't take that risk if you're a lot of teams in a lot of different positions. If you bring Bill on, yeah, people are going to lose their jobs, and if it doesn't go right, everybody loses their job basically except for the owner. Like he comes in and he will take yeah, over just... everything, and it'll last for two years. I do think that there's some truth to that, and so it's like not to be ignored, but yes, the bigger story is that reportedly the crafts were – kind of blocking him from this job yeah i also just don't think it's that different like bill comes in and blows up your building if they suck in two or three years H how's that different from a lot of coaches and gms i mean coaches and gms get fired all the time that's life in the nfl so i really don't think it's that different i just think it's different for a guy like rich mckay who seems to have a job for life there i get why he didn't want bill belichick and by the way i'm with arkan i wouldn't hire bill i would have fired bill years ago i don't want him on my team but the falcons showed interest and Kraft lobbied as hard as he could to make sure Bill didn't get the job, which to me is the story. Uh, real quick, let me keep reading from this, Arkan, and I'll get your thoughts on our big question of the day. Up now at Jones and Mego. A spokesman for, uh, spokesman rather, not sportsman, spokesman <laughs> for Kraft strongly denied that Kraft said anything disparaging about Belichick during the owner's two phone conversations in January. Okay. Stacey James said, quote, Robert steadfastly denies saying anything negative to Arthur Blank about Bill Belichick after Robert and Bill mutually agreed to part ways. As you said, by the way, he said negative things about him yeah. in a documentary. Well, again, <laughs> called listen. Called him a pain in the egg. Called him all these things. Listen. <laughs> listen to the word gymnastics. Jesus. Robert and Bill. He didn't say anything negative after Robert and Bill mutually agreed to part ways. Mm -hmm. How about before that? Yeah. In fact, Robert advocated for Bill to get the job. Well, that's a lie. When asked if Kraft had ever criticized Belichick in conversations with Blank, James said Kraft had no recollection of doing that. Okay. I mean, he doesn't have recollection. Don't of recall. Calvin Ridley's girlfriend or wife. Mm -hmm. You know, he couldn't remember that he had missed the playoffs three out of the last four years. So that's not exactly novel. James said Kraft had no recollection of doing that. But James did acknowledge Kraft may have done so prior to January. Oh, he might have ripped him. He didn't rip him after they agreed to part ways. Yeah, who can remember? He know? may have done it at, you know, I don't know, one of these private meetings with all the owners in wherever, Florida, California, Vegas, whatever. It would not surprise me to learn that owners sometimes lament to those close to them when their teams are struggling, James said. And they hate the coach, and they want him fired, and they don't ever want him to work again. I mean, sometimes people say that. What do you want? <laughs> but Robert Kraft never questioned Bill's character or trust when talking to Blank. Trust is important to Robert. He wouldn't have employed Coach Belichick for 24 years if he ever questioned his trust. Asked whether Kraft had any motivation to keep Bill on the sidelines, a source close to the coach said, if Bill goes on to have success, and Tom already had success, then who does Kraft have to blame? Which I I think is a good point. Like, Robert's running out of people to blame if Bill goes out and wins 10 games in Atlanta, right? Absolutely. So our big question of the day is up now at Jones and Mego. You can weigh in on all of this. But uh, our question is about Bill Belichick. Based on the unsavory recommendation that Kraft gave and some of the details we're giving you, we've given you some, we'll give you more coming up throughout the course of the show here today. Will Bill Belichick ever be a head coach in the NFL again? Arkan, yes or no? I say no. I think that uh, it's not because Kraft's going to keep making phone calls. Maybe he will, maybe he won't. But I think that when you have this many openings in an offseason and a evolving NFL that I think is sort of not that Bill doesn't understand football anymore, but in terms of the way the league works and the way these owners want their teams to run business-wise, I think you're talking about a, a business model that doesn't really work anymore and certainly doesn't work in the short term. You're right, Jones. I mean, like, there's a lot of coaches who only last a year or two and then they fire them. But you don't bring them in thinking that and assuming that and knowing that no matter what happens, this is only like a 50, you hit 15 wins and it's over. And that's it. And this guy's moving on. And uh, even if things go well or you're starting to get better or whatever, you're going to have to start all over again. I mean, that's, that's a, a problem. And I think that's what teams are worried about. I think that's going to be his big issue. And I don't think he coaches again. So Arkan's a no. I'm a no. I, I initially thought he would get a job this past cycle. And I initially thought in the immediate aftermath, he'd get a job. I'm like, of course he'll get a job. Some dumb owner is going to bring him in when he's almost 73 years old and, you know, 72, 73 years old, and they're going to make that mistake. I, I, I thought for sure someone would do it, but the further away we've gotten from it, the more I've read up, the more he's going to be detached from the NFL on like a day-to-day -day basis. 
the less I think he's going to get a job. Now, Mego, I know you disagree. I want to read one more passage here from Wickersham because I think it ties in with your belief. Uh, Wickersham and Van Nata at ESPN write, next season, the list of potential suitors for Bill Belichick will be limited. In the coming weeks, Belichick is expected to sign a deal to do analysis for Peyton Manning's Omaha Productions, which produces ESPN's Manning cast during Monday Night Football. He was just on with the McAfee show, uh, as we said earlier. Coincidence? Probably not. He's believed to be biding his time until next January for openings with teams he has told confidence he'd be interested in coaching. The Dallas Cowboys, the Philadelphia Eagles, two of whom had potential vacancies this past year, and the New York Giants. A source who spoke with a longtime friend of Belichick said the friend wonders if the coach will have another opportunity. He said, quote, I don't think Bill will ever be a head coach again in the National Football League unless it's for Jerry Jones. So, Mego, you think he'll coach again? I do. I do. And this is a very specific prediction, I guess. But based off of that, I think that he will be the coach for the Cowboys after next season. I think the Cowboys are not going to have success with Mike McCarthy this year. Anyone could have told you that days after their season ended this past season. And I think that what happens is Jerry Jones is a desperate old guy who seeks out the desperate old guy and Bill Belichick and these two desperate old guys right, right off into the sunset together with the Cowboys. I, I legitimately think that's what's going to happen with Bill Belichick. Okay, I... <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I, I don't, but I hope I hope so. Like, that that's what I'm rooting for. I'm rooting for Bill to come back. Dallas would be awesome. But if you're asking me what I think, I, I don't believe he'll ever coach again. Again, it's our big question of the day. Up now at Jones and Mego, you can vote uh, there. You can weigh in, 617-779-7937. Uh, right now, 51% agree with Mego. 49% agree with Arkan and myself. No, he'll never coach again. Again, you continue to vote there, uh, or you can weigh in on the phones. It's our uh, our second straight day. We've had a very tightly contested poll mm. and so i do think that there's a lot of signs you can point to and say well bill thought he had this job maybe he didn't go full court press he has a whole year now to line up the job who's more connected than him the eagles were clearly interested in from reading the story dallas flirted with the idea you know washington and some other teams maybe less so even carolina seems somewhat interested and again we'll give you those specific details coming up but he had interest he just couldn't finalize a deal and he thought he had the falcons in his back pocket I understand that. I just think, again, if the Patriots look any better this year with a young quarterback, Bill's going to look even worse. There's the potential for Bill to come out of last year looking even worse. And I wouldn't hire him, so I wouldn't blame any of these owners for not hiring him. I hear you, but I also think, like, okay, I don't know if whatever he does with Omaha Productions is going to be enough to really rehabilitate his image if his image is he's never going to have a warm conversation with you and he's so arrogant and stubborn and terrible to work with if the crafts continue putting that out there you know I don't know if Kraft gets on the phone with Jerry Jones maybe it just eggs Jerry Jones on to be like yeah yeah and I'm gonna hire him who knows all that to say like First of all, I just don't think the Patriots are going to be good this year, so I think it's going to actually look more like, oh, it's such a bigger problem than even just firing Bill. Well, firing Bill wasn't the answer. So I think that it actually will put Bill in a little bit of a better position being away from it for a year, even if he's going to be a year more into his 70s. I'm, I mean, listen, if they're much worse, then maybe. But if it's the same record, then you say, well, Gerard Mayo is just the same as Bill Belichick was, and you don't have to uh, pay him $25 million and give him all this control of everything. You can do that uh, this way, too. And I think that when it comes to what this Patriots team is going to be and how they're going to look, there's still a lot of Bill Belichick fingerprints all over it. I think if they're bad again, that's going to look bad for him. There's, a, there's really not a lot of ways it's going to look good for him this year. I think he really left the Patriots in a state where it's hard to, uh, it's hard to think of a, a really positive outcome for him right now. So is Bill punching back? Is this the beginning of it? And does Kraft deserve it? How do you feel about Robert Kraft? Now that you know he was lobbying behind Arthur Blank uh, or with Arthur Blank behind Bill Belichick's back, how do you feel about Robert? Again, 617-779-7937. You can weigh in there. You can also vote. Will Bill Belichick ever be a head coach again? Mego says yes, specifically with Dallas. Arkan and myself say no, never coaching in the NFL again. Good luck with Omaha Productions and Pat McAfee's draft coverage. I'd encourage you to listen to Keith and Hart after what I heard earlier today. 617-779-7937. You can jump in on all that. Meanwhile, we'll take you through a team-by-team -team situation in this ESPN story of why Bill Belichick didn't get a job, 